Angel's Landing in Zion National Park is one of the most popular hikes in the park. It's a strenuous hike that rewards you with some amazing views of Zion Canyon when you make it to the end of the trail. However, this hike is very dangerous and not recommended for children or anyone with a fear of heights or steep cliffs. In this video, I'm going to explain how to get to this hiking spot, what the hike is like, and how to prepare for the hike. Alright, let's go over some of the trail stats. Angel's Landing is about 5 miles round trip. This is an out and back type trail, meaning it's not a loop. You just go out to the end and make your way back. The elevation gain is over 1600 feet. The difficulty level is strenuous. And as I mentioned before, this is not for anyone with a fear of heights. There are a lot of steep drop offs and steep cliffs with over a thousand foot drops on this trail. I recommend hiking this trail from late March through early October when you know the temperature is not dropping below freezing and there's not ice on top of the path. We did this hike in mid-March and there was still some ice and it was a little bit extra scary. So just take that into consideration as well before you do this hike. Assuming you're hiking Angel's Landing in spring or summer when the shuttles are operating, you're going to want to enter the park through the Springdale entrance Go through that entrance station and park near the visitor center. If visitor center parking is full, you can actually park in the town of Springdale and walk or ride a bike over the Virgin River on a little bridge that'll also take you to the visitor center area where the shuttles all depart into Zion Canyon. This year in 2021, the shuttle system was running with reservations that you need to book in advance. The way the reservation system works now is half of them go out several weeks in advance and the other half go out the night before so check on recreation.gov i will leave a link to that below once you have your shuttle pass you want to leave from the visitor center and ride the shuttle to stop number six which is the grotto that is the start of the angels landing hike is at the grotto area we're at the grotto and we're going to start the angels landing hike so you get off of the shuttle bus cross the street and then you'll see the start of the trail where you'll cross over a bridge that goes over the Virgin River. The trail starts out more mild and less strenuous. Uh, it's more of a part dirt, part paved trail that kind of takes you in through the Zion Canyon area. You get a nice view of Angel's Landing as you're walking there. It's that massive rock peak that you realize you're going to be on top of that in the next couple hours. <laughs> and you see all of that incline that you need to have for your walk to get there. The paved section of the trail starts to become more moderate, a little bit less easy as you start to go up some switchbacks and have a steady incline going up the side of the canyon wall there. This part of the trail is safer for everyone. There are a couple little drop-offs on the side, but it's nothing like the ridge on top of Angel's Landing. So this part of the hike I would say is safe for all ages. Just keep an eye on kids and don't go too close to the edges. As you continue your hike up the paved section of the trail, you'll start to wrap around the canyon wall and you'll get some amazing views of Zion Canyon right there. Then you turn and go into this little canyon called Refrigerator Canyon. For good reason, it's always pretty cool in there because it's in the shade for a lot of the day. So all of that heat you just generated hiking up the hill in the sun, you'll cool off a little bit when you go into that canyon and the trail flattens out for a little bit. Then you'll start to have some switchbacks and eventually you'll come to this point where you look up and you see a ton of switchbacks. I'm gonna give you some helpful information. There are 21 switchbacks, or 21 turns you'll have. So you'll turn at each switchback 21 times to get to the top of this section. If you count the switchbacks, it makes this part much easier <laughs> than it seems. Let's do your dance. You did it. After all of those switchbacks, the trail flattens out again for a little bit. You continue on and you'll come to a split in the trail. If you go to the left, you'll continue along the West Rim Trail. If you go to the right, you'll go to Angel's Landing. There's just a half mile left to the end of the trail at this point. 
And this is getting close to the really scary part with all of the cables that you need to hold on to on the ledge. So if you are afraid of heights, this is the point where you want to stop and turn around. Do not even try it if you're afraid of heights because way too many people try to do this hike. They get stuck at this congestion point at the beginning of the trail. They decide that this is way too scary and then they get stuck and they're holding up the trail in both directions and it kind of causes a little more congestion than there needs to be and it's not safe for anyone. So if you're afraid of heights, stop. Don't go any farther at this point. <laughs> Now we made it to the cable section of Angel's Landing, which is also considered the scariest part of this hike. If you have a backpack with you, make sure it's securely tightened to you. Make sure that you don't have any water bottles or anything loose hanging out that could fall down. You don't want to try to go after anything if something falls off of you because it's not worth it. If you lose something, you don't want to go after it and potentially die. So just be very careful at this point. Take your time. It does get congested. There are certain points in this hike where you have to hold on to the cable for someone to go around you and people will be touching you. They'll be right up close against you. Uh, you also should wear a face mask at this point uh, in 2021 when COVID is still a major concern, but also make sure your face mask gives you enough visibility to the point where you're not making things more dangerous for yourself. You want to make sure you have shoes that have good tread. You don't want to be sliding on these rocks. There are a lot of steep drop-offs here. You also want to make sure you pack enough water, maybe a snack for when you make it out to the ledge at the end of Angel's Landing, just to have a little snack spot there and keep yourself hydrated so you don't get dizzy or disoriented while you're hiking. Some people wear a belt clip and clip into the cables when they do this hike. It takes a lot longer to do that, but it does add a little extra uh, safety measure for you. So if you would like to do that, that's an option for you. But at some point during this hike, you start to feel really afraid of the heights and the drop off. You probably just want to turn around because it's only going to get worse. <laughs> there are some sections where there's a sheer drop on both sides of you. Sometimes there's only a sheer drop on one side of you. Sometimes there's no sheer drop, but the rock isn't the sturdiest and there's no cable there. You understand the risks before you do this hike. So just keep that in mind that this is not a safe hike. People have died doing this hike before. If you're uncomfortable, turn around and take your time and do the safest thing you can to get back. If you want to avoid the crowds when you hike Angel's Landing, I recommend you get out onto this trail as early as possible. Check the first shuttle time that you can get and do that. Uh, if you're doing this hike in March, like we did, we wanted to do this hike later in the day because there were some icy conditions on the trail. We were hoping they would melt a little more uh, and they did melt a little more. It was still a little icy, but the trail was extremely crowded. And for me personally, it was not that enjoyable this time because of how crowded it was. I really enjoy this trail much more in the morning when there are less people hiking it. <laughs> If this hike doesn't sound like a fun time to you due to the crowds and the sheer drops, there is another option. The Trail to Observation Point via the East Mesa Trail or the East Rim Trail will take you to a point that is at an even higher elevation than Angel's Landing and gives you gorgeous views of Zion Canyon. I have a link for a guide to that hike in the description below this video if that's something you're interested in. After the last set of cables and chains, you'll come out to the last main ridge for the end of Angel's Landing. You'll go under a little pine tree, continue along the ridge, go past this little rock formation at the top there, and then you can get some photos. You could sit down, grab some lunch. The right side of Angel's Landing is much less steep, 
So you can walk down just a little bit, grab some lunch. There are a bunch of little chippers and squirrels running around there that will try to steal your food. Do not feed them, please. And at this point, you've made it to the end of the Angel's Landing Trail. And you have these gorgeous 360 degree views of Zion Canyon. After you have a snack, get rehydrated, then you start making your way back the way you came. If you're doing this hike in the afternoon, there are less people coming your direction. If you did this hike in the morning, then there probably are still a bunch of people trying to come out to the end of the trail and you are making your way back. So it's probably gonna be a little more crowded as you're heading back if you do this trail in the morning. Some people say that hiking back is actually scarier than hiking out because now you're going down all of these rocks and you can see down a lot more than you can going out. So if that's something that sounds scary to you, think about that as well. From the grotto all the way to the edge of Angel's Landing, all the way back down to the grotto, this hike took us about three and a half hours. We sat at the top of Angel's Landing and had lunch, and then we jogged part of the section back. Once you get back to that paved section that doesn't have any major drops, we started jogging a little bit just to make it back a little more quickly. So I would recommend giving yourselves anywhere between three to five hours to do this hike. Overall, this is a really epic hike to do, and it's a lot of fun when it's not crowded. There have been talks about having a permit system set for this trail. I don't know if that is going to actually happen. But for now, while this trail is still accessible to the public, no reservations or permits required to do the hike, get out there and enjoy it. Just take your time, be safe, and if conditions are not safe, just turn around. Your life is more important than trying to do one hike. I'm also putting together a video for 10 great things to do in Zion National Park. Of course, Angel's Landing makes that list, but there are nine other great things you can do in the park. If you're interested in seeing that list, I left a link for that in the description below this video too. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed and found this video informative and helpful for planning your Angel's Landing hike. If you have any more helpful information for visitors to Zion National Park, leave a comment below and others can read and help each other out with more information. If you liked this video and you want to see more travel footage from our experiences, then please hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of our fun travel adventures and hiking videos. And we'll catch you next time. Happy hiking, guys!